Welcome to the Unscripted SEO Interview Podcast. Yes, it's 100% unscripted, 100% unrehearsed, 100% unedited, and 100% real. I'm your host, Mark A. Preston, and our guest today is somebody I've known for quite a number of years. In fact, he came and spoke at one of my local events a few years ago, and since then, we've kept in touch, and I've followed him online. Well, let's just say he's blasting my feed. <laughs> that, that, that's, the, that's the way. So, so I've had nothing... <laughs> I've had no, no, no actual um, reason not, not to follow him. But what I want to do, I want him to introduce himself because he's got such a varied background and that. Welcome, Tom Marriott. Hi, Tom. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Not so bad. Well, for, for everyone that's listening to this who doesn't know who you are, could you give an overview of your background in the industry and what you do now, because I know you do podcasts, you do various things. So just to sum it up and make sure that I don't mess anything up, I want you just to explain it. Absolutely. Um, first of all, thanks so much for having me on. But yeah, I'm I'm Tom. I'm. You might know me from blasting your feed, as Mark so eloquently put it, um, as the SEO punk. Um, so... I my time in the industry I think I've I've had like 10 years now I think this is coming up to my decade in this in this industry now um and I started way back from the very very bottom let's put it in the the dark seedy underworld of um of, of SEO and and digital marketing starting at this uh, questionable agency at the time um sort of honing my craft although I can't really call it honing my craft while I was there um and I've kind of just worked my way up from agency to agency moving along I've always spent all my time in agency world um because I love it I love the variation of work I love working with different customers and different clients and um now today I am director of um digital marketing for a, a digital agency that's based um here in the north of England in Wigan and also uh, we have an office over in Leeds called Inner Four um in which you know we we work with a myriad of different customers and clients um from small startups to all the way up to FTSE 100 companies and as as, as Bruce Wayne kind of has, I have a slight alter ego in that whilst I, when I'm not digital marketing director at Inner Four, at night I turn into the SEO punk, which is my persona of, um, of SEO on Instagram and TikTok. I decided that I thought I'd create um, content on Instagram and TikTok because, like I said, I've, I've, I've dabbled in some... Um, some podcasting. I did quite a successful podcast called the Digital Marketing Podcast for a while that was cool. And I thought I'd move into this medium as well, which was becoming really hot. And um, and yeah, kind of got some traction on there as well, creating content about SEO and trying to teach people what SEO was actually really about. Because what I realized when I was creating that content, looking at what other people were doing, it was largely this sort of surface level nonsense which I didn't necessarily agree with um, and I wanted to be a little bit real and a little bit more um, truthful about what SEO was so that's what I created I started creating TikToks and Instagrams and it started to take off a little bit and went a bit viral and um, here I am today. Brilliant well something I picked up there is you wanted people to understand SEO from a reality point of view what yeah. did you what do you actually mean by that? So that's a really good question because when so when I was doing so basically all the way through my career, I've had this thing where I've thought that there's this there's this surface level SEO, this sort of soundbite SEO. Can, can I call it that way? It's a kind of soundbite SEO, which is just sort of people um saying the easy things when they're teaching people SEO, you know do your meta titles and your descriptions and these are all important things and everything but it was so surface level um it didn't really push the boundaries of actually what seo was in reality and there's a whole new level of seo um which if you sort of crack that egg and break it open um 
and understand it in reality, in simple terms. And that's what it is. And this is the other thing. People can overcomplicate SEO as well. They can they can over overdupe it. And I didn't like that. And it was almost like people were intentionally trying to overcomplicate SEO in order to make themselves sound more valuable. And I didn't like that either. So I wanted to sort of break this down and introduce people to the realities of SEO. And I always harp back to the fact that really, SEO and its really core principles can be very, very simple. Um, and that's what I decided I wanted to create content about. So that was what I was meaning when I said that. Okay. So now you do create an awful lot of content on the subject of SEO, but how do you constantly come up with the ideas of what to record? So this was a very difficult process of working this out and if there's anybody that's listening to this that is maybe obviously is, is interested in seo but is interested in content creation in general um then heed my advice okay what i originally started doing was i just had ideas they popped into my head and then i'd go around and record it um with a phone in my hand and it was it was awful. Okay. It was, it was terrible. And the problem with that is you'd have an idea and then you wouldn't be able to really articulate what you meant. It would be a bit confusing. You didn't really have a sense of purpose when you were doing it. Um, and it was a bit messy and I didn't like it. And, and no one else liked it either because no one would view it. So what I ended up doing was I ended up trying to create a bit of a, a process and a system in the same way that I would with SEO. I just didn't put the two together that you have to have sort of processes and systems in place to do this job well. You know, we all have master spreadsheets that do all these things. And, uh, you know, and I didn't have that for my content creation, which was crazy. So um, I ended up creating a system which is that I'd have an idea and the idea would start with what would be my um would be the entity the thing the point that i'd want to get across um so you know whether that would be you know talking about google algorithm updates for example and you know i, I would talk about the fact that you know people get all up in arms and go crazy about google algorithm updates and actually the reality is that, that google algorithm updates have changed quite a lot over the years of google you know there used to be these big things when we were talking about panda and things like that now there are all these tiny little bitty changes that go along almost every, each and every single day um so i'd start with that but then even that how i've described it then was kind of very long and boring and rambling so i'd then have to sort of put that into, I put it into a Trello card and I still use Trello today actually to do this. I put it into a Trello card and in the Trello description, I'd write my, my actual script. So I would script it out um, word for word because you want it to be short, sharp and punchy and, and make sure that you try and get your point across as, as, as eloquently as possible. And then, then I'd move on to recording that, editing that a little bit. And now I have a whole process of being able to post this content out, which is still not overwhelming, although I have had moments where it's been very, very, very overwhelming for me to try and keep churning out content. But now it's got a process that I can actually run through, which is less chaotic. Um, and I can I can do quite quite well and within a reasonably short time frame. I mean, I spoke to a lot of people who want to start recording videos, short videos, and they always say, well, I can't make it look professional, so I don't want to do it. I mean, does it need to look professional or do, does people just want reality? People now, you've, you've absolutely hit on a gold mine there. People now just want reality. I think where in the early days of Instagram and TikTok, um, necessarily there was this element, and there still is to a degree, this element of it has to be finely polished and um you know the editing had to be spot on almost like it come out of some kind of marvel studio and actually that's not the case anymore it can be much rawer i've moved now my content in particular over to a much rawer form i used to do it you know it, it i have a setup here where i'd have my ring light here and things like that and i've got the the lights in the background which make a nice pretty background and even now i've started to move away from that because actually it's all about resonating with the individual the person and it's again taking learnings from seo here this is no different from how seo works you resonate with the content that you engage with and you interact with and it's no it's no different the principles are no different here so as long as 
your point and how you're putting that point across is done well. It doesn't necessarily matter about the quality of the recording or the effects and things that you put onto it. That being said, um, there are elements of video, short form video, which you need to ensure that you put in there to make sure that it was is going to be successful, you know, and things like hooks, for example, ensuring that you say something within that first two seconds, that's not just going to make people go, yeah, moving on, uh, they're going to go, oh, what does this person mean by this thing? Um, and that's, you know, a really important element as well. Right. So moving away from content side of it, um, now, a lot of people that come to me at the moment are on about, well, what do I need to do to future proof my job, my career in this industry? Because for some reason, everyone thinks that robots are going to take the jobs. <laughs> but what's your... What's your um, persona on well my take thoughts on that yeah i i so i'm getting a lot of those questions as well so a particular strand of my content um is is about ai uh, at the moment and how ai is affecting all manner of different things in in marketing actually a, a lot of my job at the moment is is surrounded by ai and i keep getting asked these questions and it's the same thing that I'd say, let's go back to the industrial revolution, okay? There was a big shift in, in how the workforce worked and things like that. Um, yes, there was change and there was getting used to that change, but at the end of the day, there were still people that had to manage and maintain these machines um, and manage and maintain these, um, these railways and things like that. There still had to be the people to do those things. And this is no different in this entity when we're talking about artificial intelligence people coming you know copywriters coming to be worried about the fact that their jobs are are on the line because ai is going to do copy well the fact of the matter is um yes ai can produce copy let's it can do that and it could do quite a good job of it actually um however when we're talking about seo and when we're talking about rankings um actually it's going to be the human-based copy um that's going to outperform the ai copy because and we know this because of how Google have set out their principles themselves. They've turned around and said, you know, our principles of copywriting and copy are that you need to make sure that you have um, all these all these things in your expertise, experience, authority and trustworthiness. These are all entities which really AI, without the appropriate input that you place into it, AI can't really replicate. You can't replicate unique experience. And that was the reason why Google introduced it into your copy um, through AI, because AI as an entity doesn't have that experience. So we're all not out of a job yet. You know, us as marketers, us as copywriters, whoever you are, we're all, we're all not out of a job yet. There still needs to be input into these machines, into AI to, to be able to produce, um, to produce these things. And it's just about a case of adapting and SEO is no different uh, to this. You know, SEO needs to change and adapt as we have done in the past, in the past 10 years, in the past 20 years, to be able to keep up with what's going on. This is simply another one of those adaptations that we're going to have to make. So what is it about SEO that excites you? Why SEO? That's a really, really good question. I always get asked, um, I always get asked about what sort of SEO is, and this kind of falls into it because a lot of people have this belief that SEO is a kind of manipulation. Um, you know, it's manipulating websites to make to make them rank higher. It's manipulation of um, of content and things like that, or backlinks to be able to make things rank higher. And I don't like that particularly um, because that's not strictly true. You can call it manipulation if you like, but it's not strictly the case. How I like to think of it, whether you agree with me or not, is that what we're trying to do at our end goal is we're trying to improve the websites that are within our ownership, that were within our sphere, in order to make them more valuable for the users that go on it. It just happens to be a consequence of that, that if we do those things, then we end up ranking websites higher and they end up gaining more traffic so i enjoy that a particular entity for me with with seo in particular is you know you take paid ads and, and social media and all these things they're very 
roller coaster ridey. And SEO can be to a degree too, but typically with an SEO strategy, it's almost, if you do it right, it's almost growth and growth and growth and growth. It's an upward hill uh, that you just go up and up and up and up. And yeah, it can be difficult and you can, it can be a struggle to climb up that hill, but it's that upward hill that I, over a long, long period of time that I kind of love. And actually I have a, I have a client meeting later on this afternoon, I'm going to be shooting off into the office and I'm going to speak to one of my favorite clients because that's a client that I've spoken to. And it's one, it's my favorite client because of this very reason. We started with them when they were a startup. They were three young lads that had an idea and they wanted to do it. And they came to us with this idea and they entrusted us with it in order to build them an online presence um, in order to build that traffic and their business as a consequence. And now three years later, they are a three million pound turnover business from organic SEO alone. And I love that. That's amazing. Granted, they're now driving around in Teslas while I'm still on my Volkswagen, but it's still amazing to see. Um, I, and that's that's the part that I love. Yeah. So do you enjoy creating something from the ground and building it rather than working with big brands that have masses of budgets? Well, I mean, what, where, where in the sort of business arena from startup to macro to massive you know brands i mean whereabouts in that whole arena do you like working in i work in all of them um so i hope my footsie or 100 companies are not listening at this moment but um i i work in all of them I particularly enjoy when they are small and to get that growth, that that growth spurt, to get them to that medium, even to that medium level. Um, and I, I love, I really love that part of it. At the top level, how can I put this? Sorry, let's just say it. At the top level, it's fantastic. It's great. You have basically unlimited resources um, to be able to do what you want. You can utilize internal resources within these enterprise companies to do what you require of them, whether that be content creation, you can advise on them. And that's fantastic. Um, but all you're really doing at that level is kind of changing the dial from there to there um, and, and doing all of those very micro manipulation optimizations, almost like... Um, almost like a Formula One car, okay? You make tiny little adjustments to all those fins to make it just that that 0 0.00 milliseconds faster. That's essentially what you're doing um, when you get to that level. And that's fantastic. But then there's kind of politics involved where there always is in those large enterprise corporate clients. And that can be frustrating and, uh, and sometimes difficult. And then it's all about budgets and money and, and all that kind of stuff. So I enjoy it where you, when you go to the other end, um, and in particular, again, I'll use this example of, uh, of the client of, of, of I would say the name, Kirsch Kicks, which is a trainer company that we've worked with. When when they came to us with this idea of the, this market, massive market of sneakers, of Jordans and Yeezys that are over there in America that were huge, they didn't really have a massive market here. When they said, we want to bring it here, that's when we could go crazy because we looked at competitors that were like, they were very clean and they were very modern and they were trying to be very corporate and businessy. And we just turned around and said, no, we're going to be with our content, with our SEO, with your social media, we're just going to be the exact opposite of that. And I think we're going to find an audience who resonate with that because that's, they're all, you know, these people that buy these things, they're all rebellious in those, in those kinds. They're not necessarily all clean cut and, and modern and corporate and things like that. They are they're more rough and cut and things like that. They want to show off. They want to be pursuing the find that they've got these trainers on which are really cool and awesome so that's that's the bit that i enjoy when we can start to be a little bit more creative and edgy that's the word i was going for edgy edgy that's yeah. the word yes I, i'm going to say because personally i like to describe it as i like to turn the unknown brands into known brands yeah that, that's that's how i see it and that's who i love to work with because i love the fact that with very limited resources and very limited budgets, an awful lot can be achieved. And when you're there competing directly with the big brands, with the big pockets, the self-gratitude or yeah. 
would I yes. say self, yes, I've done it. Yes. Yeah. You know, and that means a lot more. Um, so with these brands you work with <laughs> that come to you and nobody knows who they are, what sort of steps do you have to take in those initial stages in order to, you know, start, I suppose? That's a really good question. First of all, you have to get to know them. You have to get to know the personality of what it is that they want to achieve and, and understand that because typically they don't really know yet because uh, you know in, in most cases when you know someone's coming to you at that embryonic stage they have an idea that they know which is a business money maker okay that's the end goal for them which is that's business okay that's how these things work i get that but what you then have to sort of strip back from that is um well what is the soul of that what is the motivation of that um what drives you to do that in the same way that you're asking me those questions what drives you to keep to doing these things that's what i want to get at so that i can create that core idea that's core style that core message that we're going to create and then we build upon that so we start looking at what the competitors are in that that sim, that same marketplace what are they doing okay what's what are they sort of pinning all of their um hopes and opportunities on when it comes to uh, seo and and things like that we start to dissect that a little bit and when we start to ask ourselves a question well how can we perhaps take the same concept because the concept's clearly working but move off in a different direction, be a little bit unique, be something that's going to grab grab more attention. So I try and strip that down a little bit more to try and understand where they kind of fit in that greater, that greater pool, usually of bigger fish and bigger sharks. That's where I typically start. Right, because a lot of people in the industry, SEO professionals um, from your, you know, entry level right up i feel as though sometimes they just don't get it for me that's the whole reason i am now an seo mindset coach because people are just not thinking about seo in the right way mm -hmm. i mean obviously with all the videos you've done and i do see that we've got a similar view on this i mean how do you come, how do you, what do you think about it? That, you know, the mindset side of SEO? I think there's a huge proportion. It's a great question. I think there's a huge portion of people that see SEO very much as a recipe. Okay. And it is to a degree, but you can follow a recipe and that doesn't make you Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> okay. It, it just makes you produce the same that everybody else produces, okay? Because they're all following the same recipe. And what the great chefs do is they go and understand their ingredients and they go and understand, you know, what, what those ingredients bring to the greater to the greater recipe and what those strengths are. And it's no different to how you build a business when you have a business. So for me in particular, I've come into a business that's 20 years old um, and I've had to sort of sit down, observe my surroundings and figure out, okay, where are the strengths of this business lie? And how can we then try and use that to our advantage to gain competitive edge over, over the other people? And it's it's no different with, with SEO. You have to identify what those competitive edges are within your customers, within your clients, within that website, within their content, within their tone, whatever it is, and try and use that to, to your advantage. And yes, the building blocks are the same. You know, we still all make bread with the same ingredients, okay? But the, the quantities and perhaps the method and how we do it doesn't have to be very much the same. It's like... I was mentioning about how I was um, absorbing all this content from other SEO content creators. And I was just inundated with people talking about keyword research and doing this sort of base level regurgitation of do your keyword research, make sure you're going for high volume, all this kind of stuff. And I'm going, well, no, because keyword research very much, very much depends on where you are in your in your journey and which keywords that you pick, you're choosing and which ones you're targeting and which ones you're going to create content with. It is it's again, it's just it's this 
uh, SEO by numbers, which doesn't really sit well with me. So I completely agree. <laughs> SEO by numbers. That's that's another thing, right? But what what do does the industry have to do in order to get out what I call the SEO robot mentality? That's a that's a really, really good question. <laughs> another I, I, one. <laughs> it is a really good question because I, I suppose I'm trying to be part of it. And there are individuals like yourself, like ourselves, and like other people in the industry that are trying to move the mindset of SEO on a little bit and progressive a little bit. And I know I'm putting myself in that pool, but I, and that's a bit, <laughs> a bit egotistical, but I, I am trying to do that by just trying to, even in my little micro niche of Instagram and TikTok creation, for example, just trying to move people on from this uh, easy to absorb content to actually something which is which is of, of value. And there are people in the SEO industry that are trying to do that, which is great, much more than there were many moons ago, many years ago. You know, there weren't many thought leaders that were willing to express and change the um, change the dynamics of SEO as, as, as there were. And hopefully now with the introduction of say AI and and the ramifications that bring the the changes that Google's going to bring to potentially you know what's been recently announced as um, a new form of search a new whether it, I'm not calling it a search engine yet I don't believe that's the case a new form of search with um, what they're doing these changes might be the shot of adrenaline that is needed to start changing the basically putting all of that behind us a little bit. Because the 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 dynamics have changed. Look, we've had the same screen of Google for 20 years, okay? Uh, yeah, for 20 years, we've had that same screen. And I think soon that's going to change. As soon as that changes, people are going to understand, okay, well, SEO is different now. SEO doesn't go away. I've had people come to me and say, oh, SEO is dead. Yeah. No, it's not. SEO is not going to go away. It's going to change, and it's going to go in a different direction. And hopefully these changes will start changing the mindset of SEO, not just within the industry, which does need to change, but also outside because there's still quite a negative mindset again SEO by numbers um around the SEO industry people looking into the SEO industry which needs to change and hopefully that's starting to happen right so you're a director within an agency yes yes okay now how is the agency model changing in the industry or is it or are they still do does the the traditional agency model need to start adapting it needs to start adapting 100% um our agency model is already quite different um in the fact that you know i've been at agencies and the agency other agencies and the the mindset has always been very production like OK, it's again, SEO by numbers. We're just going to put the things in place that need to be put in place to get to what we believe is the outcome. Um, and you end up basically with the same product on every single website and it never works and you never. And now things are very, very different. So the agency model that we kind of implement is um, that we work so closely with our customers and with our clients, that we are essentially that extension. We are merely a resourceable extension to their business. Whether you are FTSE 100, in which you know that we we go on um, client calls all the time on an almost daily basis, where we are essentially part of that team of that company. We are sat in a room with the team of all these other employees of that company and then there's us and they they see us as that you know they see us as this entity of we're just an extension of of, of this company which absolutely needs to happen because you need to understand all the facets and and everything that's going on within the company in order to be able to pull all the relevant strings and be the lab, the puppet master and things like that and be involved and ingrained in it so that you can take what you need out of it and advise appropriately and Again, that's the other shift. Agency world now is almost more consultative than it is 
production line, okay, just being that additional resource. You know, most of my job now and most of the job of my peers is sitting on calls going and people asking us questions about what they should do next and how they should move next. And our job is more consultative, which is a case of, well, we believe you should do X, Y, and Z to navigate to where you need to go. And we'll be able to help you with X, Y, and Z service, but this is where you need to go. So it's more of an extension of the companies themselves rather than that outsourced, you know, arms reach partner that just go and do something that we pay them some money and we'll, we'll leave them alone. That's how that dynamic needs to very much shift. Right. So, so when you think of that, basically you are just their say digital marketing department within that company. Right? Yeah. Do you believe that that approach has a long-lasting impact and relationship rather than the short, you know, burst. It, it really does. And it's a, it's a, I'm, I'm letting you know, out all my secrets here because honestly, what it happened, what happens is, is that I remember reading a couple of years ago that the average tenure of an agency with a client was like two years. And I remember sitting down and going, wow, like the average tenure of my relationship with most of my clients is like five to 10. You know, there are some clients that have been with this corporation from the very, very beginning. It's that seems madness to me. But I broke it down and again, talking about what the strengths of the company was. And I realized that we had such strong relationships because of what we do with our customers that they couldn't really envisage their business without us being there. They couldn't really envisage that at all. Um, so we kind of, we had these very long tenures and as a consequence of that, what ends up happening is in these companies, you know, people, inevitably move on and they go to other companies and then they go into their companies and they say oh well you're looking for a digital agency well I've worked with these guys and they're amazing and great and that's how that's generally now how we generate new business um, majoritively by people moving on and going to other companies and, and going and saying oh these guys we've worked with these guys and they're great and they're just you know they're almost like part of the team so that's essentially how our whole model now kind of operates um, and it's been very very successful for us so far. Right. So, so when you work in this way, as you just part of them, do you still have to set boundaries? So literally, are, are you say, saying, you know, ringing you up on Sunday afternoon and say, oh, Tom, we've just, you know, you, you know, do, do you have to stipulate boundaries? Yes. And um, yes, you do. What typically ends up happening, actually, you get past the point. So that does on occasion happen. In fact, this weekend, the weekend just gone, I had emails on a, a Sunday afternoon. Um, I had three fall in um, at the same time. Now, to be fair to the guy, I emailed back um, and he said, why are you responding to me on a Sunday? <laughs> and I, went, I was sorry. I just thought you wanted a response. And that was my fault. Um, but to be fair, you get past the point and they almost um, work with you in the same light as, well, I wouldn't email my colleague at this time or I wouldn't call my colleague at this time because I know that they're off. So therefore, I'm not going to call Tom uh, at this time. Occasionally it happens and I always accept it if it's an absolute disaster. You know, we still have infrastructure and things like that that happens. You know, things turn off. I accept that. But to be fair, I again, I have such we have such good relationships with these customers that, you know, they are their peers, their colleagues. They respect not just us as an outsourced partner they respect us as part of their team and as part of you know colleagues that are helping them achieve their goals so they typically respect us as such which is great wonderful i want to bring the conversation back on to seo somewhat because uh, it is the seo <laughs> unscripted podcast it is. Um, you know but I do, I do feel like the agency conversations are important for the everyone uh, but as far as the SEO is concerned, now, what part of SEO have you seen to create the biggest impact for businesses? Um, so I always boil down when I when I talk about SEO, I boil them down to make it simple. I was again I'm talking about how you make SEO simple earlier. I boil. SEO down into three parts. You have your technical, you have your content, and you have your offsite. Okay. T 
typically everything kind of boils down. I call them the three pillars of SEO. And I actually stole that from a, a colleague of mine one day. Um, and I, the biggest impact typically nowadays, it used to be technical. I would say it was a very technical led led um, industry before, but now, and then obviously there was a lot of weight towards backlinks, but very much seeing now the, the retreat of, the impact of backlinks. Now, I'm not saying backlinks are dead. I know we see all of these things. Backlinks are dead, but they're not. Okay, they they have an impact. However, it's what I really see make the biggest impact now. Certainly in the SME space, the startup in the SME space is content. Okay, content is absolutely key and absolutely crucial. Um, and it's all about not necessarily creating the most amount of content or you know generating quantity. Um, it's about creating content which resonates with the audience the most and answers their questions. At the end of the day, all content is it's answering the questions, and this is the reason why. I'm so hung up at the moment with um, how this is going to change as we move into AI and AI features embedding themselves into search and how that's going to sort of factor in because um, it's going to be it's going to be a real interesting one how how this is going to work. But yeah, to answer your question without diverting off into another to some alleyway somewhere, I would say content's the biggest key element of SEO at the moment. Right content, which answers the questions of your audience. But before you do that, you've got to understand your audience. So what's your um, ideas, thoughts on the SEO industry heavily focusing on content topic hubs? I mean... <sighs> It's it, it, it's a strategy. It's a system. OK, it's it's essentially the same entity. Um, it's all about creating content, which um, answers the question. Do I believe the hubs make an impact in terms of adding authority to a particular topic and and, you know, making sure that that. Yes, probably. It probably does have an impact. However, I can't stress enough that I've seen enough cases of websites that have that don't have that raft of content that allows them to create that tree that those hubs um I, I, to know that if you just create good content even a single piece of effective content that answers a query and a question better than anybody else is still going to be effective to rank and and, and generate generate you a huge amount of traffic so Again, I don't think that the the lean towards creating a huge raft of content is important. Again, and I know this is a um, a cliche, but it is about quality and the quality of that content. And this again comes back to the point that actually quality content writers, um, sometimes with the support of of AI tools, there's nothing wrong with that. Is 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 as a really powerful powerful thing for companies at the moment. So, what sort of tools as research tools? should SEOs be using to find out what the need to get uh, the writers to write about for the website? I am a bit old school when it comes to this. So, you know, the best tool to find in this is using Google and, and typing in those words and, and reading what is in front of you and seeing what's there and, the, and, and identifying the quality and identifying the gaps. You know, the convoluted tools... There are top level tools which help you sort of look at things that are, are really top level. But honestly, for, for the majority of things that, that I do, it's about once you know that you need to rank for this particular thing, you know, you'd want to gain traffic for this particular entity because it's a nice, you know, it's a nice volume, but it's a low volume, but it's got some, it's a really niche one. It's going to really convert because there's going to be a lot of high interest, high intent traffic running towards that just start Googling and just start reading and then start making notes uh, and saying, okay, well, this person hasn't spoken about this. This person hasn't talked about this element. Oh, we, we've, you know, we've got some expertise in here. So we're going to talk about this and, oh, it'd be nice to do our video here. You know, all that kind of stuff is so manuals are sometimes just better. <laughs> okay. Now I really want to ask this question because it's, there's lots and lots of business owners who cannot yet afford to invest on uh, employing an agency or working with an agency. For those people, when it comes to growth, I say, mm -hmm. rather than just SEO specifically, I mean, what can they be doing themselves? I love this question as well, because it's, 
I don't like you. You're absolutely right. I don't like this idea that there is there are some people that are within the embryonic stages of their business that feel like doing SEO is something that is beyond them. That's not the case. There are things that you can do. For example, I know that we're both very passionate about about Wix um, as a website building platform. I love it. I think it's amazing. It has a history um, which has tarnished it. And actually, I feel that that's extremely unfair because Wix as a platform to build your website on is incredible. Um, and I know there's going to be SEOs out there in the world that are going to absolutely tear me apart for this. And I disagree with all of them. Fight me. Um, but I believe that it's an excellent platform to build a very, uh, not sim not even a simple, you can actually be very, very complex and convoluted on Wix. You can build a, pla a website on Wix that ticks every single one of the technical boxes more so than any WordPress website would. Um, takes every one of the technical boxes pretty much out of the box without too much input. Then you just have to focus on two things, writing content and all content is, I know it sounds scary, but that's writing content, which is your expertise, what you know and do and love every single day. Write about it and write about it and write about it and post all that content up and you'll get better and better and better at it um, as, you, as you continue to keep writing. And then you just have to focus on the um, the off page stuff, which technically should naturally happen over time anyway. Yes, it might be a long burn, but it should naturally occur. You will start to gain links, even if it's at the start from directories and things like that. And Google My Business, you'll start to gain links from other places. If you're out there in the business world, in your local community, you might do local events and things like that. You'll start to gain you know, local press coverage, perhaps, and gain a link or two there. So in its embryonic stage, there is a huge amount that you can do. What typically puts people off is that there's this technical aspect of it. Oh, SEO is a very technical thing. And that's why I always push people towards a platform like Wix, because it's out of the box, extremely effective to build a website, a good website, a great looking website, and tick all those technical boxes. Then you just have to focus on, I just want to write on it. So big tick box for me and that's if there's anybody out there that's in that situation go and go and think about it well yeah it's um i was probably the first seo to move his website onto wix and i did a case study which ran fish and shed let's just say i understand what negative um awareness means back then i got absolutely blasted but i didn't listen and over the past five years, I've been working very closely with Wix and I'm on their advisory board and everything. And look at what it's become. Mm. And I think that the reason people don't like change is because, look, you're literally saying, well, Wix do all this stuff. You get paid a lot of money to do. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's the differentiator. I think that the industry needs to start accepting things rather than being scared of it. You know, things progress. 110%. I couldn't agree with you more. Look at Shopify, okay? We, for years, as a shopping platform, we had, we had options which were Magento and PrestaShop, which... Not to take anything away from Presto Shop, but I, I hate it with a passion. But the, we had these entities and they were complex and they convoluted and they required developers uh, you know, to be able to do these things. And it would take a huge amount of time. And then Shopify came along and changed everything. Ooh, Wix is no different. It is exactly the same. It basically takes all the technical stuff away from you. So you don't have to worry about it. You just focus on making something that looks great, add your content and away and away you go. So much so that over the past 12, 24 months now, I've been pushing the agency to move over to start building their website on Editor X because Editor X, and I know this sounds like an advert for Wix now, and this is actually not what I intended it to be, but because I actually truly believe it, Editor X as a platform is amazing from a, an agency-led platform. So we can go and do with the build, but what we can do for small businesses 
for SMEs is we can build um, small, simple, and something, and with complex features within it, small, simple websites at a very low cost base, which is what our customers want to achieve because they want a starting block website which they can grow and they can develop over time. And when we were using um, other CMSs, which required more technical infrastructure that required building with databases, et cetera, in the background, we couldn't do that low cost because it required so much work in order to get to that point. So Editor X allowed us to build something and then it just allowed us to create responsive websites um, easily because its ability to be able to make everything responsive, get bring everything down to mobile, it ticks so many boxes. So we pushed the agency towards basically delivering that as our sole um, low level brochure kind of website. But even then it allows functionalities like blogs, like shops and stores at a simple level to, to build upon. It's It's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I, I am obviously very much in favour of Wix, but you know, I want to touch something I've, I've asked people, I say to them, why do genuine bloggers who have no clue about SEO drive a load of organic traffic? It, rather than rather than paid traffic, yeah, like literally, I've I've had bloggers come to me and say, "Oh, Mark, you know, I, I've got this blog, and I just, you know, uh, like for instance, a uh, uh, female uh, solo traveler mm -hmm. who just travelled the world, just writing about her experiences." Literally said, "Can you just have a look at my, my website?" I looked at the stats, and I was blown away. It's like it's it's like the stats that SEOs would die for. But yep. she said, "Well, can can you teach me about SEO? I don't know anything about it." You know, I mean, this is the sort of this this is, goes back to the mindset side of it. Yep. Yeah, ex exactly that. I think uh, people don't realize is that when you can strip away, stop. Okay, mind, exactly right. Mindset. Mindset of SEO is still very much, it's a very technical thing and it's very complicated and therefore it needs to, you know, it needs to be dealt with in this way. And it's really not. And it's very simple form. It boils down to those three pillars, which I mentioned before. And if you can tick off the technical pillar, which is, you know, less of an impact than it used to be, and you can tick off the the out off page stuff which again comes naturally over time especially if you're a blogger and you're writing about experiences which people want to connect to and engage to and you know point links at as well you know travel bloggers is a great example of that someone else will create a travel blog and said oh i was inspired to go on this on this trip because of this blog etc and you create that links that way once you do that, at the end of the day, it's about creating content. And all creating content means is resonating with the audience that you want to attract and appeal to. And then Google will do the rest because it knows and understands at this level, at this entity, which Google is at now, it understands what good quality content is. So let Google do the hard work. And that's how you drive amazing levels of, of organic traffic. And I've seen, I've worked with a lot of bloggers, in fact, and I've seen those incredible um, traffic numbers, which they they can achieve organically. And they, they don't have a Scooby-Doo. They still come to me you know, worrying about the fact that, well, most of the time they come to me because their site's been hacked, but <laughs> they do come to me worrying about, you know, the tiny minutiae, you know, oh, my, my CLS is now 0.0003 more than it was four days ago because they've read this very sound bitey SEO advice, which says, oh, well, you shouldn't go beyond this point because it'll be absolutely terrible and catastrophic. And that is not the case. Focus on the core principles of SEO. And if you can provide them, it will reward you. Don't overcomplicate it. Keep it simple, stupid, as they say in the in the agency yeah. world. <laughs> so, so you touched upon um, people reading things online. Mm. Now, what should the industry or even business owners be reading online about SEO? How do they know what they're reading they should do because the, one of the biggest bugbears I have with SEO education content, there's no context. Yeah, 100%. Exactly. There is no context. And context is everything when it comes to SEO. Where are you in your journey um, is, is usually the key question you should ask yourself before implementing 
anything. Um, for me personally, I think, so, and, and this is something that I'm currently working on, um, I believe that education about SEO is best done in, I hate the word hives, but in, in groups, okay, in communities of people. Um, that's why I did the podcast because I wanted to build this community of people that wanted to learn. Um, and it's why I've now created a, a discord group, a community called the SEO hangout, which I will, I want to invite anybody on to, if you're an expert, if you're just wanting to learn, because I believe that actually we all need to learn from each other. I've learned so much from you, Mark, over my, over my career. I'm sure some points you've learned something from me. Um, and I've, I've learned loads from other people as well. And that community has led and fed me as a professional to provide better results. And as a community, which is much more open than it used to be in the past, um, we should now be trying to create communities of people which can help each other learn SEO. Um, and I try to do that through um, through my Discord, um, just creating a small a small community at the moment. So everybody's welcome to that if they wish to learn from myself or any of the any other experts that are in there. But if you're looking to learn SEO, I believe communities and learning from each other is the best way of doing it. 100%. And I always say to everyone, no matter what stage in your career you're at in the industry, even me, after 20 odd years, there's always something else you can learn from other people. It's all Sorry. about having those conversations. Um, now, the last question is, is there anything that we haven't touched upon that you're really passionate about that you think our audience should know? So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm super passionate at the moment, as I've mentioned about, um, about how AI is going to affect search. And I know there's a lot of talk and there's a lot of heat about it, but it is, it's really, really exciting me at the, at the moment as we sort of move into this new, this new world of SEO, hopefully this development, this evolution. Um, and it'll be, you know, it's in some parts scary um, because, you know, we are seeing this introduction of generative AI and I hope we don't, you know, a lot of people are asking me the question, well, you know, Google's just going to be replaced by chat GPT. Well, I don't think it will be um, personally. I really don't think it will be because I don't think we as humans believe that we are going to accept generative AI responses in search um, at all because we all crave options when it comes to the material and the content that we that we consume you know that's the reason we will have multiple news tv channels it's the reason we have multiple newspapers we all want options when we choose to consume our content so i don't believe that's the case however if it goes down that pathway then there's concerns about content creation you know a really a content creators going to keep this very delicate ecosystem of the web alive um if if they're not going to get credit or traffic for the content that they create these bloggers that we've already discussed are they going to want to keep creating content if generative ai responses are just going to generate all the responses that we could possibly need i don't think we're going to move down that path i think you know it would be it would be very um sacrificial self-sacrificial of search engines for them to do that um however it's going to be interesting to seeing how that develops and how that moves forward i think we we need to see some kind of hybrid between a, a generative ai and and traditional search you know traditional search results i think we need to see that balance between the two um in not too distant you know similarities to how we saw featured snippets in google and then the, the uproar that zero click searches caused and things like that you know um i think we're, we're going to end up seeing a balance between the two and it's going to be really interesting to see how seo develops over that time um over the you know and over, i say over that time like it's going to be a long time i think we're going to see this in in a year you know in under a year maybe even two of how this develops so that's going to be really interesting for me and that's what i'm going to be sort of chronicling on on my channels as well to see how those changes really come into play wonderful now you've given your time up here freely and you've dropped some amazing bombs of information now is there anything the audience or anyone listening to this can do for you to say thank you 
as a thank you i would love if you've listened to this you've been interested in you know what i've said go go and follow me over on tiktok it's um the seo punk on tiktok it's the seo punk on instagram um granted mark said i will bombard you but that's fine <laughs> um hopefully you will enjoy it um and you know uh, and obviously if you are interested in learning seo and or you are an seo expert and you want to give back to a community then i implore you to go and go over to those channels and you'll find a link on my on my links to the the seo hangout it's free to join i'm sort of trying to um develop it so i'm hoping to run some kind of um community sessions uh, maybe even some co-working sessions where we can all sit together in a room and work uh, on our websites and together in a community setting like we are here and talk to each other about what we see and what we learn and perhaps share ideas and thoughts that would be awesome and um, maybe even do some podcasts with maybe mark will join us on the stage one day and we can come and talk on the seo hangout and do some stuff so i'm going to be developing it but if you do are you interested come and join us on the seo hangout um and uh and yeah we will we'll welcome you with open arms and to finish off what is your SEO soundbite to finish off? My SEO soundbite is, um, oh, crikey. Um, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, on that note, i really like to thank you for joining us today. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I want to say I'm positive the audience will get so much out of this. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Mark, so much for having me. It's been an absolute joy. Wonderful. Cheers. <laughs>